Hi everyone, this is Mick Make Mail number 24. Uh, just two things this week. Uh, one's a real doozy. The second one is a Kickstarter I backed some time ago. It's only just arrived. Let's get into it. So I think I'll open the uh, big one first because I'm pretty sure I know what this one is. So this is a PCB that I designed uh, using Easy EDA. You would have seen the video I published uh, some time ago. Um, so this is the end result. So I ordered 10 PCBs, but because they fitted within the 100mm by 100mm um, size, I decided to panelize them. I didn't get any fancy color uh, because it's still only prototype stage. Nice. So you'll see the way they panelize it. It's a fairly simple option that you can select uh, and they do everything for you. They put the uh, fiducials in and the uh, location slots. They do everything for you. So all you have to do is select that option and they'll panelize it completely for you, uh, which is nice. Uh, even the V grooves as well. So, um, so this is the PCB. So I'll be getting stuck into this, making this up, building it and uh, see if it flies and then I even give you a, a handy little pin. They don't give you jelly beans. Uh, and also, along with that, I ordered uh, a stencil uh, because I wanted to see how, how they went with the stencils. Now, I didn't get a framed stencil. Um, I just got a, a plain stencil. You can either have two options, one with a frame, which uh, makes it fairly rigid, or one without a frame. So for those people who don't know what a stencil is, a stencil is a laser cut uh, bit of metal. And what you do is you uh, put the PCB underneath. Uh, let's locate it around the right way. Yeah. You put the PCB underneath, you line up the uh, holes with, the, uh, with all the pads, and you can scrape the solder on top of that it makes uh, creating your own PCBs a whole lot faster than using a dispenser. So when I designed the PCB I made the text fairly small on purpose to see how the uh, silk screen would come out. Um, so you can see all the, the capacitor and resistor names and they're all at 0.6. They seem to have come out fairly well. Um, my logo came out fairly decently although it's really hard to create a proper logo it was supposed to be phased up so it was light down the bottom and lighter at the top on the flip side you can see it's come out uh, slightly better but creating uh, logos with a uh, silk screen is is fairly hard anyway I also designed a small cutout in the uh, end of the board for the USB port uh, so the USB connector can actually uh, fit in snugly um, into the, the case. So there's going to be a case on the outside of this. One other thing I noticed is that some of the V's look like they haven't actually been connected up here um, but I just buzzed it out and it looks like they're actually connected. If you get a board from JLPCB or Easy EDA um, that, that's, you know, it might look like there's uh, some tracks that are not connected but all the ones I can see that look like they're not connected are actually connected. This is pretty good from uh, Easy EDA. Uh, they currently have an offer on at the moment, which uh, you can get 10 PCBs for only $2, um, and your first order is um, free shipping. These are panelized, so panelization costs a little bit extra, um, but anything under 100 mil squared, um, two bucks for 10 PCBs, that's pretty good. And um, two to three day turnaround time. That's yeah, astounding, really, how they can do that. So click on the link in the description below or on my website um, to pick up uh, that offer from Easy EDA. All right, um, I'm going to be busy uh, soldering these up uh, for the next week, uh, but let's move on to the next one. So the next one uh, came from Kickstarter. It was something I backed uh, a year ago. And this is the FIPI, which is a little module that uh, provides five networks. Uh, Sigfox, LoRa, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and LTE-M. So there you have it. Pretty nice little module. Um, so the ESP32 provides Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Uh, there's also a LoRa module uh, with uh, LoRaWAN stack, complete LoRaWAN stack. Um, RTC, 
and 25 GPIOs, uh, WS2812 LED, and there's a UFL for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and another one for LoRa and Sigfox. I don't know which one it is, but uh, there's also an onboard antenna. And on the flip side, uh, there's the LTE module, nano SIM socket, and also UFL connector for the LTE. So uh, let's fire this one up. I won't be able to use the LTE M, unfortunately. Um, and Sigfox, I'll need to join up to Sigfox. I don't have a, uh, an account. It also runs off 3.3 to 5.5 volts. Um, and apparently it takes one to three seconds to boot the firmware, which is pretty good. Um, it's got 4 megs RAM, 8 meg flash, uh, runs MicroPython. You program it uh, via either dra a simple drag and drop, um, similar to a flash drive, uh, or else use the Pi Maker plugin for the Atom editor. So it's a pretty nice little module. Let's uh, fire it up and see how far we can get with it. So the default program running is a simple LED flashy thing, you know the type, uh, the typical LED Hello World program. You can reflash another Python script using several methods. Um, you can join the access point and upload a new script uh, via FTP called main.py uh, which will execute on every reboot. Uh, or you can download and install the Atom editor, which supports all the uh, common operating systems around. Uh, then install the Pi Maker add-on. From Atom, you can either type in your Python script uh, into the console, or create a new file and run it from there. It's really pretty easy, and seems to be the same uh, setup as the Lopi, uh, but with five networks as opposed to three. Nice. Okay, just as I was about to uh, finish this uh, video, uh, this arrived uh, at the front door. So I don't know what this one is. It looks like uh, there's four individual thingies. Let's crack it open. Excellent. All right, so these are the water temperature sensors that I mentioned in whichever weekly roundup it is, so I'll flash up on the screen. So these are the inline temperature sensors that I received from Banggood, I think it was, or wherever it is, I can't remember where it is. They call them uh, LED display water shower thermometer. I want to crack one of these open and see what's inside it. So it's a plastic case, I thought it might have been metal, but that would have been wishful thinking, I think. So it fits on fairly easily, and once you turn the water on, it comes up fairly quickly with the uh, display. You can actually see that. So it seems to work as advertised. Let's uh, crack it open and see what's inside it. So, how do I get into this thing? Hmm. There's a hex key in there. I might be able to get it apart with that. But uh, interestingly, there's two exposed wires I can see, but that looks a little bit crazy. I'd say they'd be uh, lacquer insulated wires, but still that's just a little bit crazy, especially uh, when you're looking at uh, fairly decently high temperatures, around 40 degrees, 45 degrees. Yeah, let's crack this open. Doesn't really get any further, does it? So I thought I might have had to um, completely cut this case open or pull this out. Just snapping this off <laughs> seems to work. It's not really held in particularly well, but it is still quite waterproof. So the gyro would be located in line uh, in here, um, providing the voltage out. Um, and this is all the, where all the magic happens. So this quite good it means I can actually replace this uh, with something else like a, a Wi-Fi chip. Uh, like an ESP8266 um, and get it to do something a little bit smarter. Uh, this silicon that's in here is pretty cheap silicon so it just comes out pretty easily. It doesn't bind to anything really. If it was expensive silicon then it probably wouldn't come out quite so easily.
And there we have it. This is the sum total of uh, what's in here. And, oh, looks like I've just gone and pulled the wire. That's all right, I can re-solder that on. Let's have a look and see what's on them. All right, so um, what have we got here? So I've got an LS164, which is an 8-bit shift register from memory. I'm not sure why they'd need that. Oh, probably for the LED display. Uh, it's the most common way of controlling an LED display. And ABS6, uh, it's probably some sort of bridge rectifier of sorts. And we've got a sand off job, of course. Um, it's probably some sort of 8-bit MCU. Let's see if a bit of metho will uh, show it up a bit. Nah. Uh, usually isopropanol is probably the best way, but sometimes metho can show it up. No, it's not really coming up. The other things on the board, of course, is a large cap, which we need because the power supply is, isn't is uh, particularly reliable. And a whole other mishmash of things, a diode. I really wish I could find out what that chip is, but I can't, which is a bit annoying. Uh, but this is completely hackable. All I have to do is replace that and Bob's your uncle. So I connected it all up to a multimeter, of course uh, setting it on to AC volts uh, because it's a generator. Now let's fire it up. So it's generating about uh, 7, 7.6 volt AC. So it passed through the bridge rectifier and uh, pulled down to probably 5 volts or so. But let's uh, connect everything else up and see what it looks like. Okay, so I've uh, soldered up a nice little uh, ground pin there and all the other signals back up again. I'm going to use uh, the echoscope. This is one scenario where uh, if you want to get some sort of um, oscilloscope output in a shower, this is one place where the echoscope shines. Uh, so let's um, scope it all out and see what's happening. Okay, this is probably the first time I've ever done this, using an oscilloscope in a shower. Nice waveform. So that was pretty interesting. I uh, discovered that uh, the bridge rectifier is producing voltage range of 2.44 volts at the lowest, uh, all the way up to 4.57 volts at the max. So not many MCUs can uh, keep up with that sort of voltage range. Um, but I think the ESP8266 should be able to do the job. So since I've got um, 5 volt uh, peak uh, AC waveform coming in, um, all I have to do is just apply 5 volts uh, to the input of the uh, bridge rectifier um, and everything will sort itself out and I'll get a nice 3.3 uh, um, or 4 volt output on the other side. There's enough separation there. A bit of paper will do the trick, just to make sure I don't get any shorts. Okay, let's power it up. Five volts in. Look at that. 27.5 degrees Celsius. Nice. Okay, I think uh, we need to probe around and see what's happening with all these signals. Okay, so I managed to find a, a signal coming out of uh, the MCU which is the slowest clock rate. The reason for this is I can use uh, this clock. Uh, it's probably the refresh rate of the LED display. Um, I can use this as a reference point. Uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder up a whole lot of wires onto each of the uh, signals and figure out exactly what the MCU is doing uh, with the display. Um, and then I'll just pull that MCU off and just wire up uh, an ESP8266 and Bob's your uncle. Anyway, uh, I might do that in a follow-up video. In fact, I might dedicate a video to it on how to hack this thing. Um, very straightforward. Uh, it's a, a day job. 
so there you have it. Um, what have we got? Uh, I've got my new super duper boards that have uh, come in from Easy EDA. Uh, also got the FIPI or FIPI, however you say it, uh, from PyCom, uh, which is a nice little uh, five network uh, module, and also the shower uh, sensors from Gearbest, I think it was, uh, from memory. Gearbest, Banggood, AliExpress. I can't remember which one it was. Anyway, that's it for this Micmac Mail. Uh, thanks for watching. See you next week.